Hello, I'm Ellen Jorgensen. I cloned my first gene in 1984, which dates me a bit. Um, and I think synthetic biology is great. And one of the things that I think is the greatest about it is that it aims to make it accessible to everyone. Now, uh, I'm so in love with that concept that I'm the president of GenSpace, which is probably one of the first community laboratories which means we're not affiliated with any university or any other entity, we're just a nonprofit standalone that is actually doing genetic engineering and synthetic biology at the moment. And one of the things that I want to throw out to all of you, because a lot of you are young and you're starting your careers in this exciting field, is I want to think a little bit farther into the future about this. And one of the things that I think maybe doesn't get thought about enough, or maybe it does, is do we have an organism that's sort of a poster child for synthetic biology in terms of something that would be so safe or so benign to work with that not only we but the general public would be comfortable with people actually doing the sorts of things that as synthetic biology uh, enthusiasts we do without the whole specter of maybe something bad happening. And I know that a lot of you maybe haven't gotten to the point of your career where you might have to lie at a cocktail party about what you do. But you may get to that if, uh, right now, synthetic biology is a little bit off the radar for the general public. Um, I mean, genetic engineering isn't, but synthetic biology is. And you don't want to get the same bad rap that genetic engineering gets in a lot of circles. So uh, I don't know what it might be. I mean, maybe that actually is a picture of Cynthia, kind of modified a little. It might be Cynthia if we can convince people that Cynthia really is so modified that she's completely safe. It may be something like lactobacillus because, hey, who can hate yogurt? Or actually, maybe it's beer <laughs> and yeast because that actually turns out in a community setting to be a really good introduction to biotechnology because, hey, who can hate beer? and who can argue with fermentation as a safe process. Um, I don't know, now maybe it could be a plant, maybe clinoflagellates. I don't know, there was an iGEM presentation last year about that. Uh, but then the fear, how, what, what is exactly the fear? Is it the fear that perhaps you're gonna get sick or your neighbor's gonna get sick or is it that you're gonna contaminate the environment? Uh, so you sort of have to figure out what is going to be the most acceptable and maybe engineer something or find something or get some sort of an organism that if you really want this to filter down to the level of, say, high school and secondary school education, that you're not going to get some sort of public backlash. And if you don't believe there is any public backlash, then believe me, you should go out there into the public and talk to them. And I, I mean, I've had people say unbelievable things to me about what I'm doing. And it's just the positive side gets outweighed by unreasonable and irrational fears. So I just want to throw that out there as a challenge. Is there an organism that could be a poster child? So.